So I started my online art business mid-2017 after over 10 years of working regular full-time jobs. And let me tell you, it's been a very intense journey full of ups and downs, very humbling moments, eye-opening experiences, and honestly, the most intense journey of personal development that I have ever been through. And even though I have a long way to go before getting to the point that I want to get to with my business, business, I have compiled quite a few experiences and learnings throughout these last few years that I feel ready to share with you. I know that when I was first getting started, I was super confused, very overwhelmed. I didn't know where to start or how to move through this process and tackle all of these different parts that come along with building an art business. And this is why I wanted to create this new art business series to share with you. Hopefully these episodes will be helpful for those of you looking to make some sort of income via your work and your art skills and provide some clarity, some encouragement and make things at least a little bit easier for you. And to be clear, I don't think that building an art business is for everyone. I don't even think that selling your art is for everyone. I think it is perfectly understandable if you want to create art for fun and you just want to leave it as a fun hobby for you. However, For me, and I'm sure that I'm not the only one, I spent, as I said, many years working regular full-time jobs. And even though with many of them in the beginning, I was excited and motivated to be working in that position. Eventually, I was drained, I was depressed, and I always ended up feeling like there was something else that I was made to do, like there was something else that I was meant to pursue and put my time and energy and focus on. I know that for lots of people, the moment that you depend on your art to make an income for you, the moment that you have the pressure to create great art consistently that people will want to buy or to the point that people will want to learn from you, and also honestly learning everything that comes with building a business, that can take all of the fun away from creating art, and it's perfectly understandable. As I said, it's not for everyone. So with that little introduction out of the way, let's jump into the topic of today's video. So there is no shortage of videos, blog posts, and even courses that you can buy that teach you about the specific tips, tactics, strategies, practical, tangible things that you need to do in order to grow an art business. And we will get to that in future videos in this series. Don't worry, I'll share everything that I've learned on that. However, something that I really find is lacking in a lot of this type of content and resources is the mindset that you have to build as a working artist in order to attain that success that you're looking for, which honestly is just as important as all of those technical strategies, tactics that you need to to implement to start working on every day. Your mindset, your psychology needs to be solid and sound because it's the foundation for all of the work that you're going to be doing. If you don't have a solid mindset, then you're going to very easily hit walls. You're going to very easily give up and it's going to be very difficult for you to reach that long term success that you're looking for. And of course, success means different things for different people, but reaching success doesn't really matter if it's building your skills to a higher level or starting your art business or growing your art business or growing your income, whatever it is. It's a long-term thing that requires effort over a long period of time. And during that period of time, you're going to face rejection. You're going to come across all sorts of different obstacles. You're going to have failures. You're going to have to pivot. All of these challenges that are going to require that you have a solid foundation, a solid mindset that will propel you to keep taking action, to keep moving forward no matter what. So in this first episode of my new art business series, I want to share the five mindset shifts or changes that I have made, which have allowed me to make deeper progress as an artist and have also allowed me to grow my business 
to the point at which I'm at today, at which I'm able to make a full income or living, doing what I love and doing what I know I was made to do. The first mindset shift that I made was I started believing that I deserved a life where I could prioritize my art practice and eventually make a living through my work. So many of us unfortunately struggle with feelings of self-doubt and lack of self-worth and all of these things make us feel like we don't deserve to be living that life. We don't deserve to put in the effort toward that dream life that we want to be living and so we keep ourselves stuck we don't take action and these feelings these thoughts could be coming from negative experiences that we've had in the past our brain just trying to keep us safe and trying to keep us from taking that action or going out of our comfort zones but they also sometimes come up because of limiting beliefs and thoughts that have been instilled in us by the society that we live in or even our families. Maybe you were brought up in a society like I was where the arts were made less than or were less important than engineering and even sports. And I wasn't good at math. I wasn't good at sports. The arts were what I was good at. And so if the arts were made less than, then it meant that my skills were less than other people's skills. Those kinds of things stay in your brain and keep you from putting in the work. You need to work on building yourself up, on getting to know yourself and embracing who you are, embracing that you're an artist and prioritizing your artistic journey. Something that has helped me tremendously is surrounding myself with artists who are doing what I want to be doing. Artists who are inspiring, who I can learn from, that is the kind of media that I want to be ingesting. Every single one of us is created for a reason with specific strengths and weaknesses and passions and interests. So if you feel the passion, the urge to create, it's for a reason. Don't ignore that. Not only do you deserve a life in which you're pursuing that passion, that interest, and you continue growing in this area, but honestly, you owe it to the world. Moving on to key mindset shift number two. And this one is, I started valuing my work and my skills. And this one comes after the first one because you need to value yourself as a human in order to value the work that you're producing. But this is key because if you don't value the work and the skills that you've developed as an artist, then you're not going to believe that you deserve to be financially compensated for these skills that you've managed to develop over time and for the work that you're creating. If you struggle to see value in your work and you find it awkward to ask for financial compensation for the work that you're putting in, what I would recommend doing is spending more time growing your skills and honing your process until you get to a point at which you're more confident about the work that you're sharing. And what helped me tremendously is I started investing in more resources, books, courses, learning from artists who are more skilled than I was. It's crazy what happens when you start investing in your learning and your growth. If you're considering starting a business and making an income through your art, you're gonna have to be investing in a wide range of different things. Investing in your artistic growth and your development of your skills is just part of the investment that you're gonna have to make to grow your business. Moving on to mindset shift number three, and this one was incredibly hard for me, especially coming from someone who never really considered herself the entrepreneurial type. I don't have any other artists in my family and there are very few business owners. Um, definitely not the creative type, but this one is I embraced being a business owner. And this comes with being open to learn about many things that have nothing to do with art, such as accounting and marketing and writing techy stuff such as setting up online shops and managing your website, SEO strategies, algorithms, all these things. And alongside this, embracing being a business owner to me also means that you understand that money is just a tool. So many people struggle to talk about money and they see money as a kind of taboo subject, a 
negative thing, something that you should be never asking for or trying to grow. But the fact of the matter is that we needed to live. And as artists, we need money to continue creating art and sharing our art with the world. Money is simply energy that is exchanged for value. And hopefully, if you're an artist with a business, you're working hard to create products and services that have great value for other people, right? And if you're working hard to produce this value for others, you shouldn't be ashamed of selling, of asking to be financially compensated for that work that you're putting in. Within this point, I also want to share something that has been incredibly hard for me, very challenging to move past. It's something that I'm constantly working on to the day. And this is being comfortable with selling and promoting your products and services. The fact of the matter is that no one is going to know about your offerings if you're not constantly sharing. And everyone is so busy and life is so fast paced that if you just share once, they're going to forget about you. You need to constantly be telling people what you're working on and show how excited you are about your new projects and the value that you're hoping to bring. Otherwise, your sales are going to be super inconsistent. There is a way to share about your work and promote your work in a way that is not salesy and in a way where you're still providing a lot of value for people. And I will be sharing about how I like doing it later in another episode. But for now, just embrace the fact that you're going to have to learn about sales and promoting your work and you have to get comfortable with sharing constantly. Moving on to mindset shift number four, and this one is I embraced the growth mindset and let go of the fixed mindset. I'm going to make sure to leave links to articles and videos where growth mindset versus fixed mindset are explained more in depth in case you'd like to check them out. But adopting a growth mindset is going to be super helpful for you as an artist growing your art skills, but also, of course, as a business owner. Because a growth mindset is going to enable you to try new things and see failures as part of the process, part of learning, part of growth. As I said in the beginning of this video, you're going to experience many failures moving forward. But you need to remember that people who achieve success are just people who stuck through it. They stuck through the failures, they made pivots, they made changes, and they just tried new things until something worked. People who have a growth mindset believe that as long as you continue putting in the work, you're going to continue growing. And people who have a fixed mindset believe that there is a cap or limit to what you can do and achieve. People with a fixed mindset are also likely to get more stuck with those limiting beliefs that I was talking about before, feelings of scarcity, comparing yourself with other artists. They're going to be constantly hitting walls because if you feel that you can't grow past a certain level or you're never going to be able to reach so-and-so's level, then why put in the work in the first place? And finally, moving on to the fifth and final mindset shift for success that I'm going to be sharing with you today. And this one is to understand that your time and energy is precious and your most valuable asset. In the past, I have shared workshops and videos about my favorite productivity tips, my goal setting methods, time management, all that kind of stuff which I honestly feel is incredibly essential. I'll make sure to leave links to some of those time management and goal setting videos and productivity tips videos down below for you in case you'd like to check them out. This was very hard for me as someone who came from years and years of regular full-time jobs where I was given a schedule. I knew exactly at what time my day started, at what time my day ended. I was given specific tasks that needed to be done by a certain point. All of these things are now done by yourself. You give yourself projects, you give yourself due dates, you give yourself those daily tasks. It is essential that you understand how valuable your time and your energy is 
and to start implementing some of these strategies that I have shared in those videos and to give yourself specific working times that you're going to be working on your art in and also doing those business tasks in. It definitely took me a couple of years to find my own routines and to establish my working times and to get into my own rhythms. If it takes you some time, don't worry, it's completely normal. What's important is that you start working on it, that you start devoting specific days and times to working on your art and also working on business aspects that you want to make move forward. Whatever makes sense for you, whether you still have a full-time job, a part-time job, you're taking care of kids, you have school, whatever it is, make sure that you're setting goals and tasks that go with this life chapter that you're in and schedule those tasks into your calendar, into your weekly agenda. Give them as much importance as your other life responsibilities so that you can make sure that you're going to get them done. And with understanding that your time, your energy, your focus is incredibly valuable, you're going to start getting more comfortable saying no to those things that are holding you back or are not helping you reach your goals. And I'm not just talking about professional goals here, but you should also have personal goals and interpersonal goals, right? In another video, I explain how every year I set goals in personal, interpersonal, and professional areas in my life. And so if something comes up that I feel is not conducive or helping me achieve these goals, I will say no. Today, I am very firm on what my values are, what's important to me, and I have my goals top of mind. And that is going to do it for this first video in my art business series. I really hope that you enjoyed this one, that you found it helpful. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions on future art business videos that you would like to see, go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. Also, if you have already started your art business and you have any mindset shifts that you would like to share that have been helpful for you, go ahead and leave them down below as well. Thank you so very much for joining me on this one. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Enjoy your art practice and talk to you soon.